Amines are very important biological molecules, both because of their basicity as well as the nucleophilic nature of our lone pair on our amine. So our lone pair acts as a nucleophile, and we can react with a variety of different electrophiles, such as in our nucleophilic addition of amines to carbonyls, or our SN2 reactions that result in alkylation of amines. Now, one of the very interesting nucleophilic reactions of our amines occurs with uh, the nitrite ion resulting in a nitrosation reaction. So this reaction is going to start with our, our nitrite. And if we have acidic conditions, so I'm going to show my hydronium ion here as my acid, I can take my hydrogen from my acid so that will uh, protonate that to create my nitrous acid. And then I can actually react again with another unit of acid. And I can create a water-based leaving group from my original nitrite ion. So at this point I can eliminate water similar to what we've seen previously with our uh, nitric acid in order to form our nitronium electrophile. Uh, so we're going to break off our water here and then we'll move our electrons in uh, to add, uh, to replace those electrons that we're losing from our nitrogen. And we create what we call a nitrosyl cation. So we'd have a positive formal charge on our oxygen. And we form our nitrosyl cation. Now this nitrosyl cation, as, as indicated by our charge, is going to be electrophilic. Now, of course, if we have something that's electrophilic, we can attack it with something that is nucleophilic, like our amine. Now that we have our electrophilic nitrosyl cation, we can attack it using our nucleophilic nitrogen. Our electrons from our nucleophile will come in, we attack that uh, less electronegative nitrogen, and we shift our electrons over to eliminate the positive charge on our oxygen. This gives us a simple addition product. And now from here, we can deprotonate this so I'm using another unit of our amine as a weak base to deprotonate this Now, at this point, we still are in acidic conditions, which is what we use to generate our nitrosyl cation. Now, remember, of course, in acidic conditions, our oxygens often tend to get protonated. So this reacts as a base or a nucleophile. Um, our oxygens are, are relatively nucleophilic since they have a high electron density, and we pull a hydrogen off of our acid. So now we have a hydrogen here, and we have a positive charge. Now, as usual, when we have a positive charge on an oxygen, we want to try to give it extra electrons in order to eliminate that positive charge, right? Our oxygens don't like to have positive charges. So, if we 
give our oxygen the electrons from our double bond, that will, of course, leave our nitrogen here with, um, without its uh, full bonds. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in water, which we just formed from our uh, acid protonating the oxygen. And we can actually pull off this hydrogen here and move our electrons in to replace those electrons that we're losing from our uh, oxygen. So this results in our compound forming here. So we have a double bond between our nitrogens. We have our OH group at the end. Um, we still have an acid. So we can actually continue this reaction again. So I'm going to protonate my oxygen. And that leads to my product here. Now again, we have a positively charged oxygen. In fact, what we have is actually our water-based leaping group here at the end of our, our molecule. So we're going to want to break this off. Of course, again, that will give our oxygen those extra electrons to eliminate that positive charge. And again, we want to move our electrons in to make room or to provide new electrons for our nitrogen there. Of course, in this case, we don't have a hydrogen that we can remove here. Um, so we're just going to shift those electrons, make a triple bond, and we'll end up with a positively charged nitrogen. Of course, nitrogens are okay with having positive charge because they are less um, electronegative compared to our oxygens. Um, so our final product here ends up being this triple bonded nitrogen with a positive charge as well as our water molecule. So this is what we call an alkyl diazonium ion. So now using our nitrosation reaction, we've successfully created this alkyl diazonium ion from our initial primary amine. Now the next question we want to ask is, what do we actually gain from this alkyl diazonium ion? Now if you look at our structure here, so you might notice at the end, we have these two triply bonded nitrogens. And if we just break this off here, we can create diatomic nitrogen gas. Now diatomic nitrogen gas is extremely stable. We of course have uh, the strong triple bond um, and just a very nice stable molecule overall. So what that means, right, if our diazonium ion breaks off, we form nitrogen gas. That means it's a very good leaving group. So this opens us up for a whole other set of reactions, right? If we have a good leaving group, good leaving groups can be used for substitution reactions, SN1, SN2. They can also be used for elimination reactions, E1 and E2 reactions. So this can actually break off and potentially form carbocations. Of course, in this case, since we um, would end up with a primary carbocation, we're, we're not likely to see a carbocation forming here. Um, but if we use, say, a, a slightly different primary amine, so here we have a primary amine. Again, to form that alkyl diazonium ion, we would be adding our uh, Nitrite ion in acidic condition, so this is our nitric acid, and that would then lead to our alkyl diazonium ion. And then we can uh, pop this off and form a tertiary carbocation. 
Once we have our tertiary carbocation, we can then react it with uh, nucleophiles. So we could add water, for example. So water could just replace our alkyl diazonium ion in a SN1 reaction. So that would eventually lead to our alcohol product through an SN1 after our, uh, our water gets deprotonated. We could also, of course, do elimination. So this would be an E1 mechanism leading to an alkene product. Some of our most interesting reactions occur when we do nitrosation of an aryl amine, such as our aniline shown here. So again, we take our amine, we would add our nitrite ion, I'm adding it as an ionic salt. So I have my uh, sodium cation with my nitrite anion. Again, I want acidic conditions, so I'm going to use a sulfuric acid. This will protonate my nitrite ion in order to create that nitrosyl cation. So again, my nitrosyl cation will form. My amine attacks that nitrosyl cation, and I end up forming this diazonium ion. So in this case, we would call this a aryl diazonium, um, since it's substituted onto my aromatic ring. Now what I've created, right, is an aromatic ring with this excellent leaving group attached, right? So this is even better than many halogens in terms of its leaving group ability. So this is going to want to break off, so we can break this off of our aromatic ring. Now, of course, if that breaks off, it's going to leave an electrophilic positively charged site. So what we can do now is we can add a variety of different nucleophiles to replace that uh, diazonium ion leaving group. Uh, so we can do a whole series of different reactions from this initial aryl diazonium ion, and we can change what kind of product we get just by changing what our nucleophile is. So we can add a variety of different nucleophiles. If we add water, so water is going to attack and replace that diazonium ion. And so we end up producing a phenol. All right, so our oxygen attacks in exchange for our diazonium ion breaking off as our N2 leaving group. Um, we can do similar reactions to produce a variety of different uh, alkyl halides. So if we add potassium iodide, we can create a iodine substituted aromatic ring. Um, we can also do this with all of our other halogens. Um, the conditions change slightly depending on what cation we use. Uh, so we tend to use copper chloride and copper bromide to produce our bromine and chlorine substituted aromatic rings. Whereas with fluorine, we tend to add it in combination with boron. So we can add all of our different halogen nucleophiles onto our aromatic ring in exchange for that original um, aryl diazonium leaving group. In conclusion, what we see here with our nitrosation reaction is that we're able to create an excellent leaving group from an initial primary amine. We can do this with aryl amines, such as our aniline here, and we can also do this with alkyl amines, uh, such as our, our t-butyl amine shown here. Um, we can add this on using our nitrite ion directly, um, in combination with acid, or we can add this on just using our nitrous acid.
So of course our nitrous acid is just the acid form of our, our nitrite ion. In both cases, we end up adding on this nitrosyl cation through the nucleophilic attack of our amine onto that uh, cation. And then that ends up eliminating water to form this excellent aryl or alkyl diazonium leaving group. So we get excellent leaving groups in both cases. And we can then substitute this or eliminate this in a variety of different reactions. We can produce alcohols, we can produce alkenes, we can produce a variety of different substituted aromatic rings just from our simple aniline precursor. So we can create uh, halogenated aromatic rings, we can create phenol, um, we can also create other reactions here as well. So our nitrosation is an excellent method to create a new leaving group and create a variety of new compounds.